Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In the last episode, I showed you how we could take our unknown sequence, convert it into base four, and then extract the kamers, and then do bootstrap sampling on those kamers, and then take a bootstrap sampling, and then classify it. This is all part of our grand scheme to create the phylotyper package, which will take in DNA sequences and then classify them to bacterial taxonomy. If that means nothing to you, don't worry. I think you'll still get a ton out of these episodes. I know certainly people have been giving me really positive feedback, people from all different areas, just learning about how we can program using R. It's a little bit of a different mode than what we might do, uh, say, with a tidyverse type of data analysis. In this approach, we are far more concerned about performance because what we're going to be doing is those bootstrap samplings 100 or hopefully 1,000 times. And because we're going to be doing that a lot of times with a lot of data against a big database, well, performance is really important. Uh, you know, with Tidyverse, we might not notice if things take a couple microseconds, but we certainly do notice them when they take a few microseconds uh, when we're doing things, you know, hundreds or thousands of times, again, across a large number of sequences. What I'm going to do today is we're going to take the classifications for our Kamer bootstraps that we generated in the last episode, and we're going to get a consensus out of those. The Bayesian classifier that we are developing uh, based on the paper describes a confidence score, which is the percent of bootstrap subsamplings that have the same classification. It then returns a classification confidence, right? And so that number is the percent of bootstrap samplings uh, that had the same classification. We're doing this with bacterial taxonomy. And so normally we have things at the kingdom level down to the genus level, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus. I think. I think I learned King Philip came over for good spaghetti. Uh, we generally don't get to spaghetti <laughs> or the species because uh, we don't have enough data within a 16S sequence to classify things to the species level. Generally, you need the entire genome to get that level of resolution. All right, let's head over to our studio and we'll get going on today's work. So I have in my benchmarking directory a file called vignette.r where I'm kind of building up a vignette of how I would like people to use the tools that we're generating. I find it's also a very useful scaffold for uh, thinking about how we want the user to interface with it and how we want the commands to work. Uh, and so you can get this uh, as well as the entire repository down below in the show notes. There's a link to the starting point of this project in our GitHub repository. There's also a link for what things will look like in the future from now, what things look like at the end of the episode. Okay, something that really annoys me is that when things go past this gray line, which is at 80 characters, um, my screen toggles back and forth. And I have that because I have these really long paths. And so I'm going to put these in here uh, as variables. Uh, and so that way I can keep things within a 80 column framework, right? So I'll go ahead and paste that in. And then in here, we can then put fast A, and to make sure everything works, uh, oh, it didn't have that because I forgot to load a library tidyverse. I'm always forgetting to load something. Uh, genera, FASTA. And then we saw in previous episodes building this Kamer database and it says, can't do it because I haven't loaded everything. So I'll go ahead and load that. All right, and so then we have our unknown sequence which we're using to test things out. And so what we have now is our classify sequences function. Right, and this is kind of a prototype of what we're gonna to want to be a user-facing function. This build kamer database is also a user-facing function, uh, but things like detect kamers, bootstrap kamers, classify BS, these are gonna be things that are internal to the workings of the package and that we don't want our users to be using or touching directly, right? So again, thinking about this, we have our kamers, so we can take this unknown sequence Detect Kamers converts it to base four and then extracts all of the Kamers of a Kamer size. Again, the default is eight in our package. And what will then happen is it'll do these bootstrappings, again, which is sampling with replacement. And we then will classify those bootstrappings. Uh, what happens with the bootstraps is that it'll do one divided by the number or the size of the Kamer. And so if we have eight MERS and we have, say, a 400 nucleotide sequence with, let's just say, 400 boots uh, kamers, then basically what we're gonna be taking is 50 kamers out of that, uh, randomly sampled with replacement. We'll take those 50 and then classify them. 
And because that is sensitive to the random number generator, we want to repeat that a large number of times, right? And so generally what happens is that we do this 100 times in the original RDP implementation as well as the mother implementation. The hope is that maybe we can get a little bit, you know, a little bit maybe more of like a thousand because <laughs> it'd be perhaps less sensitive to the random number generator. And so we'll do we'll do num bootstraps. Uh, I'll say 100, get that loaded. And then what we'll have here then is a for loop or some type of loop. Again, I'm just trying to prototype in some code here. This is not going to be the final uh, result. So we'll do for i in one colon num bootstraps. And then we'll enclose these in curly braces and we'll go ahead and tab these over to get them all looking nice. <laughs> Maybe I'll call this BS Kamers and then I'll call this BS class. Okay, so I wanna see what the output looks like for each of these steps. So we'll start with Kamers and it's complaining, unused argument X equals unknown. Uh, this should be unknown sequence, not unknown. So let's try this again. It's still complaining, unused argument. So let's go ahead back to our R code and we'll look at Kamers. Um, and again, this is in the detect Kamers function, um, which we spent a lot of time working on in one of the last episodes. Here we go. Um, oh, and so the argument is sequence, not X. Okay, so let's go ahead then and say sequence equals that. That works, but no, it doesn't work actually because Kamers size is wrong. So we'll go ahead and put this to eight. All right, we'll get there. Okay, now we've got it. And so then our Kamers, look like this. Um, so there's an eight nucleotide sequence. And so there's only going to be one Kamer, right? Because one divided by eight is this value. All right. So it's a little silly at this point. Um, and so if we looked at BS Kamers, it's going to complain, can't find function bootstrap because I misspelled it. So we'll do boot strap like that. And then we get BS Kamers. So I said up ahead that we'd already done the bootstrapping, but if you have an eight nucleotide sequence, you can really only have um, one Kamer, <laughs> and so then you can't bootstrap that. All right, so this isn't gonna work very well. We could imagine perhaps, let's drop this down to three uh, and get Kamers. And now if we look at Kamers, we see that there's uh, six different Kamers. Uh, and so then if we bootstrap that, uh, it's still probably gonna be zero, right? Well, there's two. So no, it's not gonna be zero because it's six divided by three, which gives us two, right? And so we've got these two Kamers and then we classify it. Uh, and this result is gonna be uh, kind of a mess. Um, and that's because BS, oh, I changed the name. So this should be BS Kamers into here. And so now if we look at BS class, we then get a number back. And that number is a index in our genus in the database, right? So DB, has both classification data as well as Kamer probability data, right? And so I'm um, forgetting what the said 3165. So if we did like DB bracket bracket uh, genera and then 3165, that then gives us this classification, which of course is all made up because I really just inserted ATGC, ATGC, right? Um, maybe we could increase this a bit <laughs> uh, to get maybe a little bit more of a, I don't know, longer sequence. It's clearly not realistic, but work with me. All right, cool. So what we're gonna then do after we've looped through this num bootstraps times is that we're gonna hopefully be storing this in BS class. So I'm gonna take BS class and um, BS class is a number and it's gonna be outputted as a vector of these values from the genus column. So this is gonna be a numeric vector and the length uh, should be num bootstraps, all right? And then let's see. Uh, and so then BS class needs to index into uh, the vector. And we can use our double bracket notation because we're changing one thing, right? And so then if we, if we try this, let's see how it goes. I'm trying to use this longer uh, sequence, so Again, this is all gonna be gobbledygook, but we're looking for like what the output looks like. So then if we look at BS class, there should be a hundred values. Sure enough, there's a hundred values. And so now what we need to do is to get the consensus, right? We could then do consensus BS class, and that will then take BS class. 
and it's also going to take the DB because we want the database to know what taxonomy goes with each of these index values, right? And so, cool. So this is what we're going to work on finally <laughs> today, right? This is this is our goal for today is that we're going to take in a list of or a vet I shouldn't say list a vector of indices that go into DB genera, and then it will output uh, the fraction of bootstrap subsamplings that have the same classification at the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and genus level. So I'm going to start with a test. So we'll do use test on KMERS. This should open up my test file, right? And so we finished last time with classified bootstrap sample works. And I will do test that uh, consensus classification of bootstrap subsamples. All right, so I need to put in a database and previously we used genera with one level. I need to have th maybe two or three levels so we can look at consensus values at higher positions in the taxonomy, right? And so I'm not gonna use all eight <laughs> or six, whatever it is, I'm gonna use three because I think that'll be a bit simpler. And so what we'll do then is DB uh, and I'll say uh, genera and get rid of that pop-up because that's annoying. <laughs> And then we'll put in here a, a set of classifications, right? And so we'll then do, I'll do A, uh, A, A, I'll kind of alternate capitalization. And then we'll uh, do another uh, B, and then let's do uh, A, A, C. And then I'm gonna repeat this, but maybe I'll put a, a B in the middle, right? So we'll do like B here be here and be here, right? So species A, if you will, is not the same as this species A because they've got different families, right? Or they've got a different higher level. So reading left to right, you'd go from like kingdom down to genus or species, right? Uh, and so now we need to give it our bootstrap classifications, which again will be numbers. And so I'm gonna put in five values. And so I'll do BS class and I'll do uh, a vector. And so we'll say like one, 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 one and uh, let's do um, let's do four and so again these are our bs classes right and so we could imagine thinking about like db uh, genera on bs class and then that gives us these five classifications and you'll notice that there's one not like the others right uh, and that that b is different from these A's, right? So it's kind of like a different family. So we need to think about what the output should be. And what I'd like to have would be a list where I have one value being a vector of the classification, the majority classification or the plurality classification, and then another vector in the list being the confidence score of that classification. So we'll do expected as a list, and then we'll have expected uh, taxonomy as a vector, right? And so then the three levels uh, will be a uh, lowercase a and then um, upper class a, right? And then our expected confidence will be uh, one. And then the second position is different in number four, right? So four here is a b a. And so that should be one for the think of like the kingdom level and then 0 0.8 for the next level and then 0 0.8 for the next level down further okay and so then what we want to do is i def describe this as something right consensus bs class so i'll go ahead and grab that and pop that in here and then i'll do observed as that and then we have bs class there and our db is there right and then we could say expect equal um, observed and expected okay and of course if we run this as a test it's going to fail because it can't find the functions consensus BS class so we have to do that now all right so we now have our task and we can go ahead and copy this description over to our kmers.r file and I will start with a no uh, RD which tells the documentation 
function in uh, use this or dev tools, not to worry about documentation for this function because it's not going to be exported. All right, so then we have consensus BS class and we'll do function, right? All right, so again, what we're taking in is this vector of classifications and then also the database, right? And so we can imagine something like this, right? Um, then gives us these values, which we already saw up here. What I'm thinking about is that we're going to need to split apart these classifications, these taxonomy values by that semicolon. And we've seen something like this in many episodes ago where we talked about string split. But a few episodes back, more recently, we talked about the string i function, which tends to be a bit more performant than string r or the functions we see in base r. So we're gonna use uh, string i, stri split fixed on um, our, our BS, on, on this, right? So this will be our taxonomy. And we'll put that in here, taxonomy. And then I forget the argument is probably pattern, right? On a semicolon. And so that what this gives us then is a, a list as output. And so this was the first classification, the second, third, fourth, and fifth. Um, and so now we've got these classifications split apart. And so what we'd like to do is figure out what is the what fraction of our bootstrap samplings had an A, capital A, in this first position, um, and then the second position and the third position. And at each step, we need to keep in mind that it might not be a unanimous vote, right? So kind of like this case in the second position, um, it could be A or B or C, um, or I guess A and B, how I defined it. But we need to know, you know, if A was the majority, then we want to return A with that majority score, and we're going to ignore B, right? And so these are the things that we need to be thinking about as we go through this. So I know that I'm going to need a helper function to get the consensus. The way I'm going to do this, at least I'm thinking right now, is that I'm going to consider this first position, right? I'm going to look in this first position and say, what, ha what is the consensus taxonomy and confidence? And then I'm going to concatenate these together, the, the first and the second position, and kind of go all the way through. And I'll get what I should get back is a a uh, at point eight, right? And then I'm going to do the third together, right? And the reason I'm doing it this way, where I'm kind of growing uh, the the taxonomy as I go for each level, is because it's going to be rare, but I think it's possible that we could have two genera <laughs> from the same family, and that worries me, right? But if we keep growing the whole chain of the taxonomy. We don't have to worry about that. So I think it makes for a little bit more work, but in the end, I think it'll give me a little bit more peace of mind about things, okay? So I'm gonna create a new uh, test. So we'll do test that, and then we'll say return correct consensus uh, taxonomy and confidence, okay? And what this could take, I can imagine, would then be a, um, a taxonomy. So I'll do C, A, 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 uh, A, I lost one of my quotes. <laughs> All right, so we'll do that. And then what we'll do then is get consensus on taxonomy. And then this will be observed. Right? And then our expected, we're gonna make this a list and we'll do expected, um, yeah, taxonomy. Uh, and that's gonna be an A. And then our expected uh, confidence will be a one, right? And then we can do test that um, and we'll do observed and expected, okay. And so let's do a couple of these. Um, and I think we can, I don't know, I'll test this with like a few different things. And we'll do B, B, B. And so then the return should then be A semicolon B, and the confidence on that should be 0 0.6, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. I'm actually gonna comment out this earlier test 
because we didn't, we're not done with it, right? We've got to create another function and test that. So I'll go ahead and save and test this. Again, that's going to fail because it can't find git consensus, which is great. <laughs> and so I'll go ahead and grab that. And now we'll, again, create another function, uh, again, with this no RD. And we'll put in here a function on taxonomy. And so then let's use the more complicated example here uh, to do our developing. And so if we have this as our taxonomy, and maybe I'll go ahead and remove that here. One thing we might think about doing would be tabulate, which we saw a few episodes back. Tabulate, however, only works on integers and factors. And what we have is a character vector. And so what I'll use instead is table on taxonomy. And so table will work to generate a table from strings, right? And so what I could imagine doing would be uh, taxonomy uh, table on that. And then what we could do is something like which max on taxonomy table. So I'm going to call this max index. And so then max index is two, right? And so if I then take taxonomy table uh, with max index, that should return a uh, semicolon b. Actually, it returns a three <laughs> because that's the value here, right? Uh, and so the name would be a semicolon b. And we can get that with names on max index, which gets us a semicolon b. All right. So now we're going to return this as a list. So we'll say list. And the argument that I gave it over here was taxonomy and confidence. So we'll say taxonomy equals that uh, and put a comma here. And then confidence equals that, right? And maybe I'll change these names. I'll do ID and frac. Um, actually, I've got these flipped, right? So this should be frac and this should be ID, but I haven't divided it by uh, the total number of bootstraps yet, right? And so maybe what I'll do instead is divide this by n uh, bs, and then we'll say n uh, bs as length on taxonomy. Okay, get some white space, and then that will return frac as 0.6 and the id as a semicolon b, and then we'll come back to our test and make sure that we've got this. So id and frac, and then id and frac. All right, so let's save this and test and hopefully it passes. No, it did not pass, of course. Nothing ever works the first time. Um, so it must be a single string, not a list. Oh, I see why. <laughs> uh, because I use test that expect instead of expect equal. Why did I do that? I have test that on the brain. Okay, we'll go ahead and try this again, run it. It looks like we have things flip-flopped. Um, let's go ahead and put them back and see if that works. That worked wonderfully. Um, so it does care about the order of the element lists. All right, so who knew? All right, so now we have this great tool for getting the consensus, and we can then hopefully think about using that with our um, outputted pattern. I'm going to go back to the other pattern that was a bit more complicated, this one here, right? And let's see, taxonomy, that, right? And so what we'd like to do is basically go through the number of levels. So we'll say n levels, and I'll do length on, um, well, this needs to be um, my parsed taxonomy. So I'll say taxonomy split, all right? And then we'll go ahead and do taxonomy split on one, and this should be three. So we wanna apply that get consensus to each of the three levels. Right, so I can imagine doing l apply um, with one to n levels. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take my taxonomy split and for each element, or I guess each column as we're kind of thinking about it here, uh, I'm going to start pasting those together, but I'm going to paste it together again, getting the consensus at each taxonomic level. Okay, so this might be a little bit hard to conceptualize. So we might do this in fits and starts, but we'll get there eventually. So I'm going to use an anonymous function to, to start this out. 
So we'll take i, and that'll be the value one, two, three in this case, right? Let's see what happens if we do paste on taxonomy split with columns one to i. Um, and we can then do collapse equals semicolon. Uh, that's not happy because I didn't load n levels. Yeah, this isn't doing what we want. This is basically looking at the first list item and then adding on the second list item and then the third list item. We really want to go into each element of the list. And so I think I need a separate S apply here. So I could do S apply. And with that, maybe we could do taxonomy split. And then within that, so we're basically taking each element of taxonomy split and we're then going to have another anonymous function, which I will then call P for paste, right? And let's see, we'll bring in paste here and we're gonna then give it P as basically the element of the list. And so I think this should work, although it's unhappy with my parentheses. So let's, yeah, all right. So that worked. <laughs> so again, it takes a little bit of thinking through through all of this. I don't like that I have two anonymous functions nested within each other. It's not super readable, of course. Um, I suppose I could take this and um, begin to think about making a separate function, but I think that's just gonna get a little bit cumbersome, right? So again, what we're doing is we're taking one to n levels and n levels we can think of as each spot in the semicolon string, right? So like this is position one, two, and three. So we're gonna take position one, and then we're going, that's gonna be the value of i, and we're gonna take taxonomy split, and we're then gonna take each element of taxonomy split, and we will then paste together um, from taxonomy split, which will be p, um, the, values that vector in those those index values of our list from one to i right and and then we'll collapse them together we'll paste them together with a semicolon right and so uh that seems to work pretty well and so then what we want to do is pipe this into our get consensus so we'll do get consensus on that and so then that gives us our consensus we get our fraction and our id um, and we get 0 0.8, 0 0.8, right. So that worked, wonderful. Hey, <laughs> what do you know? Um, and so here then, we'll call this consensus list. Um, on that, maybe get some more white space in here. So what we want is this, but we basically want it transposed, if that makes sense. So we're gonna have one um, element of the list be the fraction and one be the ID. And so we'll have two elements with lists that are with vectors that are three units long. So to get the taxonomy, I'm gonna use this third slot because that's the full string, right? And so what we can then do is consensus list uh, three, and that gets us that, and then we can say uh, ID, and that gets us that, but we want this split apart because we want it as a vector, right? And so we'll do string I, STRI, uh, split, fixed, and then we'll do pattern equals semicolon. Oh, and I forgot the parentheses at the end of that. All right, there we go. So that's that, but we want it unlisted, right? And so we'll then do unlist on that. Uh, I don't want the Unix pipe, I want the base pipe. So we'll do that. And so that gets us our vector, right? So that's our taxonomy. Um, now we wanna get back our consensus. And so again, our consensus list was this, right? And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll loop through this with an S apply. So S apply will loop through a list or a vector or whatever and returns a vector. And so if we take consensus list and do S apply on that, then you might be wondering, well, what is the function <laughs> that will get a element of a list? Well, believe it or not, the double bracket is a function, right? And so that's pretty slick. We can then give it a argument, and so I'm gonna give it the argument frac um, to return the frac element of the list. And so voila, <laughs> we then get our vector of confidences, right? And so we'll call this taxonomy, uh, I'll say equal, because we're gonna put this inside of a list, and then we'll put that there, and then we'll say confidence equals that, 
close that off. And of course, this is wicked long, so we'll go ahead and break this apart on multiple lines. And I like to put pipes on separate lists lines as well. So then this will return our taxonomy and our confidence. Very cool. Let's go back to our test, and I will uncomment out the test that I had test commented out before when we were doing the the um, the, the consensus taxonomy down here, the Git consensus. So go ahead and save and test that. Yes, it passed. What do you know? Awesome. So this is very cool because that then gets us through here. So I'm going to put in a good unknown sequence. Um, and instead of a bunch of gobbledygook, um, I'm going to go ahead and if we look at sequences, uh, we get all these sequences, right? And so what I'll do instead, I think, is put in sequences uh, bracket bracket one. So let's go ahead back up and let's reload everything. All right, our camera size, cameras. Hey, it did it. <laughs> Seven confidence levels. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus. So we have one too many confidence levels. That's a little odd. Um, and then we've got three taxonomy levels. So I think the solution is that I hard coded in the three here, right? Uh, because for my example, it only went out to three spots. And so this needs to be n levels. So we'll go ahead and put n levels in there. Save and test. It still passes. And then let's go ahead and retry um, with our vignette and see how that does. So we see that we now have all of our classification names, but this last plot is double quotes. And I think that is because we put a semicolon at the end of our taxonomy strings. And so if you're thinking about splitting things by semicolon, it's gonna create an extra blank field at the end. I think the solution to that would be to go ahead and remove the semicolon from the end of that. Um, I'll go ahead and add that to here. Because I have the tidyverse loaded for this vignette, I'll go ahead and use uh, some of those functions. I'll do mutate on taxonomy to be stringi, stri, and then we'll do replace all uh, care class. Actually, maybe I can do replace last, last care class. That's cool. Um, and we'll do that on the string, so which is gonna be taxonomy. And then the pattern will be a semicolon, and then we'll replace it with nothing, right? And you know what? I, I'm I'm a little bit worried about the last. Maybe I'll go ahead and put in all because there might be times when we read in the taxonomy where it doesn't have a semicolon at the end. And so to get a semicolon at the end of a string, we can put a dollar sign to the right of the character. So let's try that. That runs, um, and it's not happy uh, because I think I've got a regex here instead of a fixed. So if we do regex. Let's try that. And now if we look at genera, uh, well, let's see. <laughs> if I do genera uh, one, uh, two, uh, let's see what that gets us. Well, that's way too long. So I'll go ahead and do poll taxonomy. Uh, and I'm trying to get the end of the string. And so now we see that it's gone. Okay, so let's go ahead and reload all this and rebuild the database and see if we get the correct result. Very good. And actually, the classification that I had up above here, if I can find it, was this same organism, right? Uh, and so this, I'm generating this classification through our algorithm, and it's recreating what was already there. So this confidence is very high. That might be real, but it's also likely inflated. Uh, it's inflated because we're classifying a sequence that's also in our database, right? And so because it's in the database, that makes it all the easier to classify the sequence. And so that's um, something that we should think about if we we're going to go ahead and try to benchmark this method. Um, the RDP, when they wrote the, the Wang paper, they had a strategy for doing it called leave one out, which basically you rebuild the database without the sequence you're trying to classify. And that's something we might try in a future episode. Um, one of the things also that we note is that our confidence scores are all quite high, but we can imagine having a case where our confidence scores fall as you go down to more specific levels. And so we'd like to perhaps set a threshold to um, remove uh, taxa names 
where we don't have confidence. And so I think maybe we'll try to do that in the next episode so that you don't miss that episode. Please, please, please make sure that you've subscribed to the channel and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.